Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is an introduction to the abstract modifier. I'm going to open up my web browser to javacjava.com, select menu, then Java OOP tutorials. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the abstract modifier intro. The topic of the abstract modifier is especially confusing when learning an object oriented programming. There are many rules to memorize for the proper use of the abstract modifier. Instead of making, just making a giant list of the rules, I'm going to spread abstract methods and classes over several tutorials. I'm going to quickly introduce you to the concept of isa and hasa. They literally mean isa and hasa, and they will simplify your life. Let's play a little game where you compare the relationship of two objects by placing isa and hasa between them, and you pick the combination that sounds right. Airplane is a flying machine. Yes. Airplane has a flying machine. No. Helicopter is a flying machine. Yes. Helicopter has a flying machine. No. Glider is a flying machine? Yes. Glider has a flying machine? No. Boeing 787 is an airplane? Yes. Boeing 787 has an airplane? No. FA-18 fighter is an airplane? Yes. FA-18 fighter has an airplane? No. Cessna amphibian is an airplane? Yes. Cessna amphibian has an airplane? No. Boeing 787 is an engine? No. Boeing 787 has an engine? Yes. F-18 fighter is an engine? No. F-18 fighter has an engine? Yes. Cessna amphibia amphibian is an engine? No. Cessna amphibian has an engine? Yes. Glider is an engine? No. Glider has an engine? No. All right, you get the idea. And I was very repetitive on this because this, if you Learn to think about this and just don't forget about it, you know, in the next few tutorials. This will kind of make your life a lot easier when you think about, especially inheritance there. So, but you get the idea. So the airplane, helicopter, and glider all have a is a relationship with a flying machine. That makes the flying machine an ideal candidate to be a superclass. The Boeing 787, F-18 fighter, and the Cessna amphibian all have a is a relationship with an airplane. That makes the airplane an ideal candidate to be a superclass. That also makes Boeing 787, F-18 fighter, and the Cessna amphibian ideal candidates to be subclasses. Let's think for a moment and make a small list of a few things that all airplanes have in common. Uh, they all have a model name, they all have a top speed, they all take off, and they all land. An airplane that doesn't take off or land is not much of an airplane. Uh, now based on our list, we need to ask ourselves a simple question for each list item. Is this the same for all types of airplanes? And if the answer is yes, we can code the necessary members into our airplane class. If the answer is yes but wait, then we need to make an abstract method. I'll explain. Okay. Um, they all have a model name. Eh, think about that. Yeah, yeah, every airplane is gonna, going to have some sort of model name, so yes. So let's create a private string model and put in some constructor and its accessor code. Uh, they all have a top speed. Yes. Yeah, uh, every airplane is going to have a top speed, so they definitely need to have a have some sort of forward motion in order to be able to fly there, so we'll go with yes on that, and they'll have a max speed, so we'll go ahead and create a private int top speed and put in some constructor and accessor code. Okay, they all take off. Let's think about it. Airplanes, they definitely take off, but, you know, but wait. Um... The Boeing 787, it takes off on a really long, you know, typically like commercial type runway at an airport, right? The F-18 fighter, it's like launched off an aircraft carrier like a slingshot. And the Cessna amphibian, it can uh, take off on water or land. So, fundamentally, these guys all take off, but they do it in many different ways. So, um... Since airplanes can take off in many different ways, we need an abstract method. And I'll explain that in the code here. So now let's talk about they all land. Okay, 
That's a that's another yeah they all land that's that's a yes but wait now airplanes can land in many different ways so we need an abstract method same thing Boeing 787 needs a really long runway and F A 18 fighter is like caught by one of these cables on a little catcher thing on it when it lands on an aircraft carrier and the Cessna amphibian can land in a lake you know um, or or on land too so yeah. They all land, but they're a little bit different there. There's some differences in how they can take off and how they can land. So we need to create abstract methods. So I'm ready to walk you through some code and I will touch on a few rules, but keep in mind I'm saving all the rules for other tutorials. So let's go ahead and scroll down here to this source code here. Let's highlight it all. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really quick by right-clicking, selecting new folder, not new folder, new shortcut. Let's delete that. New short, boy, bad a thousand today. Who's in charge of this mouse? New shortcut, CMD, next and finish. Okay. So when we open up our command prompt, first thing we do is type in Java C. You should see all this stuff scroll by. If you get an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. I want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash changes us down to the root directory. Um, I'm going to make a directory called Java. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make another directory, and I'm going to call this one ab intro. Change directories to the abstract intro folder and I'm on notepad abstract intro.java. Abstract intro.java is the name of our source code file. It's going to contain many classes today. Okay, let's go ahead and do a control V to paste or right click and select paste. Um, let's go ahead and save this up here. So what I've got here is I've got this class airplane. So what we just kind of sort of talked about there um, with asking the questions and then go ahead and coding it up there. Um, basically, you know, they all have a model name. The answer to that was yes. So I created a instance variable, private string model, good encapsulation right here. And I created some getter and setter accessor methods here for setting the model name and getting the model name. And I implemented uh, an overloaded constructor here with one of the parameters of model, and it'll go ahead and set the value of the instance variable to the same as the parameter being passed in. Then we asked ourselves another question. They all have top speed. The answer is yes. So we created, the, I created this uh, instance variable top speed up here, marked it private for good encapsulation. Did my getter and my accessor methods here, my setter and getters. And, um, then I also added a, another parameter to the overloaded airplane constructor, which will set the instance variable top speed to whatever's passed in here. Okay, um, one more method I just stuck down in there, and that's just summary, and that'll display to the console the tops, the string literal, the top speed of a, and then plus the model name and then is, and then plus top speed, okay? And then down here, we asked ourselves a question, can, well, they all take off, yes, but wait. Okay, so this is what an abstract method looks like. It has the abstract keyword, right? And then you'll have a typical method declaration and where you would normally have your code body sitting in between some, some braces like this, you don't have anything. Now. What that tells us here is that, you know, we're, we're, we want, airplane is going to be a sub, a super class, right? So we're going to have all these subclasses down there. And we know for sure that all of our subclasses will be able to inherit these, these methods up here that we've actually have bodies for, right? But we don't know exactly how they're going to handle the takeoff or the land. You know, we've thought, I've thought of three different types of airplanes that all take off and land, um, you know, different ways. So that's enough for me to say, okay, I, I, I'm not going to put a whole bunch of takeoff code in here. And then if this is a 787 or if it's a, you know, we don't want to do that, that would be terrible. So we create this abstract method right here. 
And the abstract method, basically we're telling any subclasses, you have to create this method yourself, right? And so that's the whole entire purpose of it. And by marking this, um, <clears throat> if a class has at least one abstract method in it, you have to mark the whole entire class abstract. And I'll get into, those are really kind of the only two rules I'm gonna talk about in this tutorial here. So let's come down here to the Boeing 787. And Boeing 787 is an airplane. So we extend airplane, airplane becomes our superclass, Boeing 787 becomes our subclass. We inherit all of these methods from the superclass there, right? And we are forced to override the takeoff and the land, right? So in the takeoff method here, I've got the at override annotation here and I'm displaying to the console, you know, just for the takeoff method here, the 787 needs a very long runway to take off. And we're also forced to override the land method here too as well to make our own, right? So in this land, I've got the 787 needs a very long runway to land, okay? So over here in the F-18, it's the same thing, override the takeoff. The F-18 is launched off the deck of an aircraft carrier like a slingshot and the F-18 is hooked by a catch cable when it lands on an aircraft carrier. So both of them take off and land, but they do it in fundamentally very different ways. Same thing with the Cessna Amphibian. The Cessna Amphibian can take off from the water or runway. The Cessna Amphibian can land in the water or a runway. Okay, so that is, um, that's basically the way that works there. Let's go ahead and come up here to the abstract intro class and where I've got my main method, entry point. And basically what I'm going to do is create a new Boeing 787 type reference object commercial and set it equal to the new instance of a Boeing 787 passing it the model name and its uh, top speed. And then I'm just going to invoke the summary method, right? That we uh, inherited, right? By extending the airplane class there. I'm just going to use that one. I'm not going to use these other getter and setters there. So that's all being done inside of the um, constructor there. I'll display that and I'll display, you know, the various different takeoff and land um, methods there. Okay, so fairly simple there. Same for that. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's come up here. Let's uh, compile it. <coughs> Clear our screen and type in Java and um, to run the Java virtual machine and we'll invoke the abstract intro class. So we get the top speed of a 787 is 590. The 787 needs a very long runway to take off. The 787 needs a very long runway to land. The top speed of an FA-18 is 1,190. The FA-18 is launched off the deck of an aircraft carrier like a slingshot. The FA-18 is hooked by a catch cable when it lands on an aircraft carrier. The top speed of a Cessna Amphibian is 213. The Cessna Amphibian can take off from the water or a runway. The Cessna Amphibian can land in the water or on a runway. Okay, so that's basically exactly what we were expecting there. So, introducing uh, basically abstract methods here where subclasses of you know you're going to be making airplane a superclass that's like its sole purpose in life is to is to be a superclass you know that you want to force all your subclasses to go ahead and implement these methods here all right i'm going to go ahead and close out of this close out of that and leave you with some final thoughts um, when a subject is confusing, the best approach to achieve understanding is through repetition. You know, watch this tutorial again, search on the internet for other resources, you know, eventually it will just click and you'll get it. Now, stay tuned for my next tutorial where I, just, where I, where I will discuss the rules of the abstract modifier.